What's going on, Salt Strong Nation? I'm out here doing some wade fishing today, and I wanted to make a quick tip for you guys about the top three types of spots to find fish at consistently in the winter time. Now, I am at spot number one, but I first want to cover some of the key things you want to think about when you're fishing in the winter time. First off, there's not a whole lot of bait that's around in the winter. Fish are at a little bit of a disadvantage when it comes to having ample amounts like they do in the spring and summer when there's the shad hatches and all the mullet migrations. Now they're really having to put themselves in areas where they can consistently source food without having to expend a lot of energy, which brings me to my next point. These fish don't have a lot of energy in the cold winter months because they are cold blooded again and their metabolism goes down during the colder months. They don't have as much energy. They're not consuming as much. Those cold temperatures leave them a little bit stunned. So they're oftentimes more lethargic. That's why you see a lot of fish that aren't moving around too much in the winter. So it makes it really important for us to pick the right types of spots and know that these fish are going to be holding in these areas so that we can really pick through them slowly. Because again, we really are going to have to roll these lures right past these fish's face to make sure that they're going to actually react to them uh, because they're not going to be chasing things down like they do in the other seasons. Now, another big factor for us is warmth. Any kind of area that these fish can get to and have some warmth is going to be really, really important. And again, proximity to deeper water, which is going to allow them to have stable temperatures. So warmth and stable temperatures are two completely different things. A lot of times the areas that are very warm are not going to be warm when it's really windy or a front comes through immediately. On an average day like the one I'm at, the shallow areas are going to be really warm. But during windy, kind of stormy fronts during the winter time, those shallow areas get much colder than the actual deeper zones where those fish have stable temperatures. So those fish will lock themselves down close to deeper water. May that be a deep cut or some of the areas I'm going to talk about later uh, that allow them to have those stable zones. So the first area I want to talk about is the one that I'm fishing right now, and that is a deep cut along a shoreline. Really, any kind of deep trench or cut that's close to shallow structure. Now, the reason I recommend fishing these is because it allows those fish to have access to both shallow and deep water hunting opportunities. And we know that shorelines that have structures such as the oyster bars or the mangrove trees that are a little bit down in the water, that's structure that bait's going to congregate around. So that leaves one area that those fish know that they can source some food from and have stable temperatures nearby and areas to warm themselves. So that marks all the checks off for this type of zone. And I've had some really great success actually fishing this shoreline recently, but also fishing other ones from the boat too. This isn't just a wading thing. Finding those deep cuts next to shorelines is absolutely key in finding a lot of fish in the wintertime. Now, not every region has these types of shorelines, especially if you're in the Carolinas, you're in Virginia, you're in Georgia, any of those areas of coastal marsh. A lot of times, these straight shorelines that are on the edges of flats aren't too common. You might find them on the edge of an open mud flat, but again, not super common. What's even more common and even more productive is to find those areas where a creek bends leading to a flat. Now, I've had great success when I was in the Carolinas fishing these types of bends, especially on the negative tides when fish get locked down in those deep holes because bends oftentimes are going to have areas that of really high current and that's going to be moving a lot of bait through those areas. Most times the bend also has a point right at almost the what I call the armpit of that bend and it's going to allow those fish to have a point that they can hold on to, have a little bit of wind protection if they need it, uh, but also a deeper area because that bend is again in an area of high current. It's going to create a small deep hole uh, that's right pretty much in that pocket. So that leaves a lot of area for trout, redfish to kind of stack up in. And most times you can also pick up some flounder if you're jigging the bottom of that hole too. So that's an area, again, we've got a good source of food. We've got good wind protection, close to deeper water. Uh, those fish are going to be congregating in those zones if you're in a coastal marsh environment. Now, if your plan on the flats doesn't work, another great place you can go look for really consistent action in the wintertime is docks. And this is not just for your redfish and your trout and your flounder that we're often targeting on the flats. You can actually pick up a lot of sheep's head in the wintertime as they start to move into canals and protected zones. Most docks you're going to be fishing are in protected canals. I wouldn't recommend focusing on the docks that are in the intercoastal channels because they have a little bit less wind protection. Uh, they're going to be a little bit colder than those ones that are in the far back canals that have protection from the houses around them, all those other areas. And what I do recommend, a little pro tip here, is make sure you pick to fish the oldest docks that you can find because those are usually the ones that have the most structure, the most barnacles, especially if you're after sheep's head, I always target the really, really old docks because they have the most food sources for those sheep's head to feed on. Now, one last thing I want to add to all of this is anytime you have an oyster bar in close proximity to any of the areas that I just talked about, that is a great place to do some fishing because a lot of times what will happen in the winter when the tides are low, that sun's going to beat down on those really hard shells that are oftentimes of darker color, and they're going to warm up and act almost like a heat radiator to those fish. They're going to be congregating 
around them. So they're gonna hang close to those areas, almost like space heaters, and the oysters do oftentimes provide really good cover for bait, and it's gonna allow those fish to have a good little source of food. And most times, oysters do grow in areas with high current, so likely close by, there is some deeper water. So make sure that you're looking for oyster bars as well when you're picking these types of zones. Now, I really wanna reiterate that these are just my favorite types of spots to go target. There's a ton of different types of areas out there. These are just my top three, and I recommend you guys do some scouting on Google Maps to find your own really good hot spots to fish in the wintertime. And if you don't know how to do that, we have some really great courses in the Salt Strong Insider Club about finding spots. Our Finding Spots Mastery course is a great way to learn how to become a more efficient angler by picking spots, actually creating a good pre-trip plan based on the conditions around you. Most winter days are not gonna be the same. Some are really blistering cold. Some have some slight warming trends in the afternoon. And there's different things you need to do to adjust to find those fish. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this tip and it's gonna get you onto some fish, but I definitely recommend if you still are unsure about how to pick the right spots in the wintertime, that you go check out our Spots Mastery course and some of the other introductory courses that we offer in the Salt Strong Insider Club because they're really gonna help you guys become better fishermen. So thank you guys so much again for watching and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys on the next tip. And if you're new to Salt Strong, just know that we're the number one online fishing club out there because we actually guarantee we're gonna help you find and catch more fish, save money on tackle, and make friends fast, or it's free. So we hope to see you guys in the Salt Strong Insider family soon, and thanks again for watching.